Hi, I'm Professor Goins, and welcome to the Math Professor's YouTube channel. If you're looking for videos explaining topics in college mathematics courses, you've come to the right place. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and let's get into the current video. Um, I want to take a look at solving homogeneous equations with constant coefficients, um, more specifically, homogeneous linear differential equations, that's a mouthful, uh, with constant coefficients. And this is going to be probably a four video series. Um, in this first video, I'm just going to take a look at the characteristic equation, and then we're going to look at the subsequent cases in the following videos. So first and foremost, let's say I have the following differential equation. So for a differential equation of the following form, I've got a n nth derivative of the unknown function plus a n minus 1 and minus one derivative plus, and then I would have a one y prime uh, plus y is equal to zero. So in other words, the coefficients, I guess this would be a sub zero, so a naught. And the idea is that y is the unknown function. Of course, the number in parentheses is the order of the derivative and the coefficients here are fixed real numbers. So this is a linear constant coefficient homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So for this differential equation, let's assume we have a solution of the form y is equal to e to the rx, where r is a fixed. Actually, let me back off on that. Where r is a constant. As we'll see, the value of r could actually be a complex number as well, so it's a little premature on saying it's a real number. Uh, okay, so I have a exponential, I have an exponential solution to this differential equation. Well, let's go ahead and see what the requirements of the value r would be. All right, so I know that this is a solution to this differential equation. Let's go ahead and pop this in. Now, one reason why this is nice to, if we had a solution of this form, is because to check it, of course, derivatives of the exponential function are just the exponential function with, of course, a factor of the, um, r, the r coming out using the chain rule, of course. Now, first derivative brings out one factor of r. Second derivative brings out two factors of r. Therefore, here's what I would get. When I plug this function into the nth derivative, I would get the exponential function times a factor of r to the n. Right, because I would do the different. I would differentiate n times, which means I would get n factors of r, and therefore plugging this function into this differential equation gives me the following. I get a n r to the n e to the r x. This is what I would get plugging into just this first term, plus a n minus one r to the n minus one e to the r x, that's what I would get plugging into the second term, plus dot dot dot, this is all on the same line, uh, plus a1 y prime would be a1 r e to the r x, and then plus a naught e to the r x is equal to zero. Okay. <clears throat> from this differential equation, I come up with this equation, which is combinations of powers of r and exponentials with the same coefficients that I originally have. Now, notice this is equal to zero, and each of these terms has a factor of e to the rx. Let's factor that out. e to the rx pulled out of every term would, be, would give me, from this first term, I get a n r to the n, from the second term, plus a n minus 1, r to the n minus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus a 1 r, ran out of room again, plus dot dot dot, uh, actually I don't need plus dot dot dot, plus a naught, okay, 
and then that whole thing is equal to zero. Now here's what I have, a product equals zero. That means one of the factors is zero. But of course the natural exponential function or any exponential function will never be zero. That means what I have inside the parentheses or square brackets must be zero. So this implies a n r to the n plus dot 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 plus a one r plus a naught is equal to zero. Let's recap. If I have a solution of the form e to the rx as, um, as uh, again, as a solution to this differential equation, then what happens is I get this polynomial is equal to zero. And conversely, the same thing happens as well. So this is an if and only if statement. And this is what we call the characteristic equation. Characteristic, yes, okay, just making sure I spelled it right there. The characteristic equation for that differential equation. Notice what I did um, is, in, in general, what we, would, what we would do to go from here to here is we don't have to go through these steps again. We keep the coefficients, so a n, a n, all the way down to a naught. All I do is I replace the nth order derivative by a power of n, power of a. Uh, r to the n, okay? And again, this is called the characteristic equation. Now, before I kind of erase and kind of summarize what we have, to solve this differential equation, what I do is I convert this to a polynomial. Solve the polynomial, that will give me solutions to the differential equation. Now, there are some more details that we have to go through, but let me kind of clean this side up and let me explain. As I mentioned, once I have this characteristic equation, depending on the solutions, we might have to do different things. Here's the three scenarios. One, we have real and distinct roots. Two, we have real and repeated roots. Third, we have complex roots. So depending on the type of solutions I have for this characteristic equation, it tells me what I have to do with the subsequent um, solution to the differential equation. And these will be subsequent videos where we look at real and distinct, real and repeated, and then complex roots. Okay. Now, let me just go ahead and summarize basically what we are going to do to solve one of these differential equations using the characteristic equation. Okay, so what we have is we are looking at solving a differential equation. Uh, that doesn't show up very well. Let me pick a different color. I was just trying to pick something different than the, the yellow that I was using. Let me see if this blue shows up okay. Okay, I guess that'll work. Let's say I'm trying to solve this differential equation. So what I'm trying to do is I want to go from the differential equation to a, I'm going to need to be more specific, to a differential equation solution. Okay, well, we have methods for doing that. What we're going to take a look at in this particular case is what if I can use a characteristic equation. So I go from the differential equation to a polynomial equation. And then when we <clears throat> solve that polynomial equation, we come up with the roots of the polynomial. Well, then when I take the roots of the polynomial, we can convert that back to the differential equation. So what this does is this actually is going to allow me to solve a differential equation by going through this alternate path where I convert the differential equation to a polynomial equation. Once I have the polynomial equation, I can solve that using algebra. 
get the roots of the polynomial. Once I have the roots of the polynomial, we're going to convert it back to the differential, the solution to the differential equation. And that's going to be dependent on the types of numbers we have for our roots. Are they real? Are they distinct? Are they repeated? Or are they complex? Um, so stay tuned for the next three videos in this four-part series for how to work with the solutions to the characteristic equation. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing.